Hi guys, welcome on my YouTube channel Co Shopping Pumpkin. I'm super happy to be with you today because it's a little bit unregular video. It's not a pattern, it's not a tutorial, it's just an explanation about the supplies you will need if you want to start crocheting, if you want to start making amigurumis. Because I remember when I first started, I was a little bit confused. I was like, oh, what's that for? What's that for? So that's why I'm making this video. And I'm also, I also made an article in my blog about it. So it will be linked uh, in the description box. And it will have also like the Amazon links if you want to, if you want to order your uh, first set from there. So you will only have to click the, just to let you know the links are sponsorized. So if you buy it, I get a little commission from it. So just to let you know. And let's get started with the most uh, logical thing you will need is a hook. So you will find a lot of types of hooks, you know, like different material, different sizes, but the basic is always the same. Like it's a stick right here always and a hook at the end. The hook at the end is used to grab the thread and pull it through like different stitches and stuff like that. And I don't know if you already like know about knitting, but the big difference about knitting and crocheting is knitting is two needles, you know, a hook is only one. So you hold it with your left or right hand, depending if you are left-handed or right-handed. So it depends. So that's what you will need. And after you are probably wondering the difference of materials, the I will say the most common one, I mean, the one I see the most are the one you see with like, rubber here and aluminum and I guess I do think they are the best one because they are ergonomic so they are comfortable because you will see when you start crocheting a very long time it can get pretty painful in your hand or in your arm so it's very important to have something that fits the shapes you know of your hand so I would recommend you to go for the rubber ones, but just so you know, you can also find bamboo ones. Bamboo, 100% are good if you are traveling. I've been traveling back and forth between the US and France, and I was always, because you know at the airport, you are not allowed to get needles or like they're scared that you stab someone with a hook, I guess. But if you have a, a bamboo one, they let you go through it. So um, I never tried, honestly, to take that in a plane because I don't want nobody confiscating my, my hook. So I always went for the bamboo ones and they are not the best one because if they are not very good quality, like they can, they can damage the thread. Like, I don't know if you see, but if the wood is not very good quality, it can like, you know, grab the thread in bad, bad ways. But, you know, like for a 10 hours flight, it's always good to be able to, to crochet a little bit. So I recommend the bamboo one if you need to travel. And then, don't be shocked, <laughs> you can get like the old plastic ones. Uh, I know they, they also come in like this type, of sizes but you can get all plastic ones like that and these ones are jumbos like i will explain later for the sizes but they are very big and they are all plastic same thing as i said earlier they are not very ergonomic because they don't take the shape of your hand so it can get a little bit painful i i don't recommend 100 percent you know like the all plastic one but you know sometimes you you want to use a jumbo one so you know he, all plastic can be good in that case. So now I will explain you how to choose the size of your hook. So as you can tell, it's a lot of different sizes. It can start from 2.75 millimeters, I believe, to like giant hooks, like 25 millimeter, like, uh, you know, like this one, I don't know if you see. Oh, we don't see the size. Well. It's here, 25 millimeter, like it's the biggest one I own. 
and you can go to very small so um, basically the smaller your hook will be the smaller your creation will be sm small no the smaller your creation will be the smaller your hook will be the smaller your creation will be sorry about that and the more detailed it will be so when you see like very small amigurumis you know like super detail they use very small hooks and if you want to go for very big creation you will need big hooks but also the it just doesn't depend on the size of the thing you want it depends on the yarn you choose so with cotton for example which is very thin let me show you cotton so here if you choose a very small thread like that you will need a small hook like a 2.5 millimeter three millimeter and for to show you this thing was made with a three or a four millimeter hook so you see it's like very detailed and the, the stitches are like super tight. So if you want to make small creation, you know, like it's perfect. And then if you want to make big creation and you, you want, you know, to use big yarn like that, for example, let me show you for my bear, you will need a bigger size of hook. But if you are wondering, you know, like, oh, I don't know which one to choose, don't worry, because every time you get yarn, here in the back of the yarn, you will always have different tags. So here you will, you will have, you know, like sizey, okay, it doesn't adjust very well, but here it's a little hook. Here it's needles, that's for knitting. Here it's for the hook. And it gives you the recommended size. So for example, for this very thick yarn, shouldn't yarn, you will need a eight millimeter. So I recommend you to use a recommended yarn. You can go one size bigger, one size smaller, but I recommend you to, to follow the inscription because if you don't respect that, the hook will not be proportionated to the thickness of your yarn and it may create holes, your stitch may not be tight enough, it, it just, the result is just not good. So I will recommend you to always, always, you know, like check and see, oh, I need an eight millimeter, let's get the eight millimeter. So that's how you will choose the size of your hook. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, like if you're wondering which size is it, it's always written right here. So up here, oh, my camera doesn't address, but here you will see at the end of your hook and even on like the very small bamboo ones, they wrote it down, they, we don't see, but they indicated the size, you know, of your hook right here so, so to conclude the hook section um what you have to think about when you choose your hook is um is the fact that it's ergonomic or not the fact that it feels comfortable on your hand or not is very important because you're gonna be spending a lot of hours crocheting so you have to feel comfortable with it as i said i do recommend like the rubber ones but it's up to you and then for the size as i said earlier think about the yarn you are using it's always uh, written on it and think about the size of your creation that you want so now we're gonna talk about the stitch markers here these little things are very small but very very essential to the success of your uh, work so you know basically when you read a pattern you have rounds a round is made of a number of stitches and at the end of the sentence you always say okay at the end of this round you're gonna need 20 stitches or 25 or whatever you know is a number between parentheses so basically a stitch marker will help you count this number of stitches and make sure your round is correct and it's very important that your round is correct because if it's not your creation will not look like what it's supposed to look like so this as i say very essential to the success of your creation 
and so it's very easy to understand you know like where to put it you put it on the first stitch of your round some people put it on the last stitch of your round of their round but i think it's kind of confusing i mean for me i guess my brain just works this way but um, so you put it on the first stitch of your round and then you go all around and when you come back to this thing you count the number of stitches you made and you know if your round is correct or not so it's very important you just put it you know at the beginning and turn around if you're back and if the <laughs> if the number of stitches is correct everything is perfect you can go to the next round so that's why you need mark uh, stitch markers also if you don't have stitch marker don't worry you can put uh, you know like paper clip i think i need to... okay i don't know <laughs> so you know like a, yeah a paper clip like the thing you you use uh, to to attach the pages together i don't know how you say yeah i think it's a paper clip and uh, you can use a piece of yarn as well, you know, like just slide it and, you know, that's your marker. I do like stitch markers better because I think, you know, it's it just easier and once it's clipped, it doesn't go away. But whatever you want. Oh, and also I forgot to tell you in the article, there are different pictures like that, how to use a stitch marker. So you can go check it out. Maybe it will be easier for you to understand with the pictures. So the link is in the description. Now I will talk about the round counter. So this thing or this thing. Um, as I said earlier, in a pattern, you have different rounds. Some rounds are different from one another. So you have to follow them, you know, like carefully. But sometimes they will just tell you to do like 12 rounds of the same stitches. So because of that you will have to count them every time you are done with one you will have you know like to check oh i did one so as i said you will have stitch marker so every time you come back to your stitch is one round and every time you come back you will need to to click because like that it will keep uh, like the count of your rounds you can also write it down but i do prefer having that and also for the information, um, in crochet set, they give you these things. These things, honestly, I, I really don't like them because uh, they get confused very easily and it's not like very, it, it can switch very fast. And I'm telling you, I don't know if you ever did crochet or not yet. But when you are at your like forties round and it just get messed up and you don't know which one you are anymore, it's very frustrating because you are scared that your creation will not look good. So um, you know, I recommend you to have something very liable. So they give you that in sets. You can use it if you want. But I did order one on Amazon like that. It's a thing, you know when. I saw that when, you know, when you were a teenager and you were like running around the field, the, the, the sport teacher or the coach, he had this thing to, to click every time you did a, a lap. So I do recommend this thing here. So you click on it every time and I think it's super uh, reliable. So I recommend these things. And as I said earlier, the links are in, a, if you want to order it on Amazon, they are in a, in the blog post. Now we will talk about the safety eyes. Uh, basically, the safety eyes are used to bring life to your amigurumis. I don't know how to say it in a different way. Like they, they just give a face, you know, like for my bear, like the safety eyes are right here for my others, creations, you know, like you just give a face to your amigurumi. So it comes, in a lot a lot of ways but it's always uh, the same principle the safety eyes let me show you a very classic one so th these ones are the most basic ones so they always come with you know like the eyes the screw there is a little screw over here and a little round part 
they are called safety eyes because when you clip these parts together like that it just secures the eye you know like it just make it almost impossible to take out if i can give you an advice if uh, you are making toys for um babies or kids i just recommend you to not put these things because we never know you can just embroider the eyes you know me i make my creation to sh to make patterns so it's different i don't give it you know to any child or nobody but if i had a kid i would be careful about that so that's just my opinion you know and so um, also what i do also is to make sure i always add a little bit of glue after putting the safety eyes together just to make sure it stay in place and so it comes in different ways you have the classic ones it comes in different uh, diameter so the pattern we always tell you you know like you should use the six the seven whatever millimeters uh, so these ones are the classic ones after it comes in a oval shape like that and this one, you, oh my God. this ones, uh, they are a little bit kawaii. I mean, not a little bit, they are kawaii. So the two little dots, I really like the, the effects. Wait, let me show you my unicorn. Because which one I show you? I show you the pink one. So you see, it just gives such a, a cute look to, uh, to, oh to the creation. So these ones are oval kawaii eyes after you have, it's such a mess. <laughs> I have stuff everywhere. Um, it comes in a round as well. Um, you can find them uh, with, um, how do you say, pupils? No, um, pupils is a French word, with a iris. So with different colors of iris. So it just, you know you have a lot of choices so you can pick which one you want but he always as i say comes with a little round safety part to make sure it stays in place and now i will show you just to how to put it this is your creation this is your crochet work and this is the front size you see the stitches and this is the back side you can really see the oh my god my camera doesn't adjust well okay there you go so you see like the stitches are a little bit more puffy this way this is the back side this is the front side side and so basically to put your eyes uh, usually some pattern will tell you which stitch you have to put on that depends on the pattern but so you insert it in the front of your creation and in the back you just clip the round parts like that very easy and now you like it it's safe like you cannot take it out as i said earlier you can add some glue on the back or just don't use safety eyes if you are scared they're just gonna get loose you know so that's how it works also if you are making a ball or yeah a ball make sure to insert the eyes before closing the ball because if it's closed you cannot put the back part anymore so just make sure you do that before so that was for the safety eyes so the last essential supplies you will need for amigurumis is gonna be stuffing like a, a turkey you know like the turkey stuffing Sorry. bad joke um so <laughs> basically I, I think i say too long you know around my um my american husband that always you know talk about thanksgiving and stuff so um, basically for the stuffing let's go back to the crochet tutorial uh cro yeah crochet explanation um so the stuffing right here it's used to um just give the shape you know of your amigurumis so the the stitches do matter but the stuffing really matters to give the appropriate shape for your amigurumis 
if you don't stuff enough or you if you overstuff a creation that your creation can look totally different so you have to really go little by little and just look at the shape every time you know like just don't over stuff and then look because you may stretch the stitches so just go little by little and oh here it looks good i keep it this way so for the stuffing i always go for the polyfill that's the one i always saw in the us everywhere so it's polyester fiber fill i do know it exists different type of stuffing you can buy you know like little polyester balls or different type of fibers but i always go for the polyester one and it looks like that you know like that the quality of your stuffing is very important because if you buy not qualitative stuffing the density can be bad and you you may need to put a lot a lot of uh, of stuffing to not have a big density so sometimes i think i believe i'm not an expert about stuffing but i think the price depends of the quality and sometimes you think that oh you're gonna get a cheaper stuffing but you will need a lot so I always go for the brand one and you know you don't need like crazy amount to stuff your creation so I think it's important to sometimes <laughs> buy the famous brands uh, so that's it the stuffing that so um, for me that all the basics of crochet please let me know in the comment section if you need anything if you have any question I'm super happy um, I love talking to crochet beginners, you know, if they have questions, it just makes me so happy to help them. So please let me know if you have any questions and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can uh, subscribe to my channel right here or right here, subscribe to my channel and I see you very soon. Bye bye.